That's a cute plush. And I think you're muted. Oh, oops. Okay. Hi, welcome. <laughs> Sorry. Um, hi, welcome to our sixth class of Intro JavaScript. We're just going to be finishing our countdown timer here. We're almost done. Just going to fix the numbers and then write the JavaScript so that um, the timer actually gets to start working. Maybe some extra CSS. All right. So you guys should all be caught up to this. And then just let me know if um, you're not caught up. Um, but does your countdown timer look like this? It's kind of overlapping. Just give me like a thumbs up or thumbs down. Thumbs up. Okay, nice. Um, so, um, how about, where should we get, where should we get started? Okay, how about we do some more job? Actually, no, let's fit, let's fix this button, the buttons here. All right. All right, first of all, make sure here, script of JS styles, let's yes. Okay. Are you just making sure that this is the right, it's referencing the right file name? Okay. So if you remember from last week, our index had the class button here, btn, to our buttons here. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to fix the way the buttons look. So we're going to do dot btn here. Have we done this before? OK, we haven't. OK. So the dot is the symbol to reference the class. Um, so we're going to align oops, my self to center. So what you can see here that um, basically we have like this box that is a three by five graph or not graph matrix. And so each of our um, objects, or not objects, but like our attributes here, they all have their own designated box. So um, our start and reset buttons have their own boxes. And then when we say align self to the center, we're just gonna make the boxes um, like go along this, like aligns itself to the center of like the boxes that they're in. So you can see that it's like, this is optimal way to for web de for website design because you can see that um, the things, the like attributes, they stay in like the same relative place no matter like how you manipulate the website. All right, anyways, self-aligned center. And now we can change the width and height of width and height of the boxes. So we can make this 100 pixels. So you can see that these got smaller um, on the long side. And then height, we can just I'll just change it to sorry 40 pixels. And you see it makes the uh, little boxes. Um, and you can also change font size. I'm gonna make my font size 30, 30 pixels, just make it a bit bigger. And then justify self center. So justify self center will just make the um, text appear in the center. All right, there we go. You can see our um, 
it's starting to shape. All right. Um, I'll give you like a minute or so to, to just um, get this down. I think I type faster they than you guys. They still kind of overlap. They still kind of overlap? Yeah. If you pull out the web page, it has more space, so they won't overlap. If you're worrying about them overlapping, you can just make the bo the button smaller. Yeah. So okay. if you have like any, this is your web page. So if you want to change a font color or placement, though I don't really suggest changing the placement at this point. Um, I mean, go ahead. You can just make it however you want your page to look. Uh, 10 pixel flat size is really tiny. <laughs> yeah. Looks Another thing we. When you drag. Huh? It looks yeah. better when I drag it, like a button separate. Yeah, you drag it out. All right. Um. Hi, do you guys have all of this down? And I'll start on the other stuff. Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Wait, are we missing anything here? Mm. Okay, I think we're good. Oh wait, no, the input. Yeah, the, the, these, these squares. Okay. And then, so for these squares, we have a class. Wait, what's the class? Okay. So you can see input ID. So that's like, we're scanning in some value here. And then we gave it a class time. So now let's change this appearance. Oops, time. Open bracket, close bracket. So we're going to do the justify self uh, and also align self to center. So that way, um, these boxes are not overlapping anymore. You can see that. Good. Look, it's starting to shape. All right. And then um, if you don't want a border, you can just say border none, but if you like the border, um, you can keep it or you can mess with the size and stuff. So you can see um, here it used to have like a black outline and now it, it's just a white box on top of the purple. Um, and then you can also change oops, sorry, the background color. So here. So you can see now the white turned into purple and I don't really like this color. I can even change the color for the buttons. Oh, you wanna change the color for the buttons? Yeah, I'm just wondering if I could change it. Yeah, you can. Oh, I think I can. Does, does background color not work on it? Oh yeah, it changes the color buttons here. Look, you can just say background color buttons. So, uh, like background color, you it, you can change to any color. Same thing, um, just like in the grid or the attribute. Okay, I like this color. No, both of them are antique white. All right. And then um, these are kind of small, so we can also make them bigger. I'll pull this back a little bit. All right. So maybe, uh, so the way you can do that is you can increase the font. Oops, sorry. Increase the font size. So I'm going to make this 50 pixels so you can see it clearly. So now these are huge, oh my lord. Um, and then you can change the area around this. So width is 70 pixels. 
height is 50 pixels. All right, so that's a way that you can change the height and width of the bot of the but the time things. Yeah. Okay. Are we missing anything else? So what's the font and the width thing again? What? Like there's a width and the font and the height. Okay. Thank you. Font size. Or here. Font size 50, height is the same thing, and then width is 70. Okay. And then I think the last of our CSS would be like the hours, minutes, and seconds labels. Um. Wait, let me check if we have a class on those. Yes, we have the class label. All right. So the difference, okay, if you're wondering what the difference between ID and label, um, since it seems so like similar the way that you can use them, um, ID you'll use on a specific attribute. So you're going to use it once. It's like naming a variable. After that, um, you shouldn't uh, create another variable with the same name, otherwise it might be confusing, right? Or also, it won't accept it. So, um, but here it's a little bit different. Um, but anyways, yeah. Here, like for example, ID our label. This ID will specifically refer to only this hours paragraph. And that just makes it easier to differentiate when you're doing like front end coding. All right. Um, so to change our labels, so dot label and then open bracket, close bracket. And this is the last CSS thing, I think. And then we're gonna be finishing the rest of our program. And the only thing that's left is the JavaScript, which is um, our class. So, <laughs> okay, anyways margin is zero so that just makes it so that it's like closer to the top and then we're going to justify itself to the center of the box so center you see here the label move from the beginning of the box to the middle of the box right here and then we're going to align oh, i keep doing that align self to the center and that will bring oh, oh and that will bring our stuff down and then you can uh, change the font size i'm going to change it to 50 pixels actually no that's too big 30 pixels all right, and then you can also like add like font color or um, font family um, to change it depending on how you like, but I'm okay with how this looks. Actually, Marvin, uh, Marvin zero? Margin equals, uh, margin zero, yeah. This just makes sure that, um, the hours, minutes, and seconds will um, be perfectly in the center. Can you copy the code in chat? Yep. Thank you. No problem. All right. And then, oh, press save just in case. Now, finally, the rest of the JavaScript. All right, so we added a start event, uh, wait, start add event listener. So that's how we're going to start the timer to um, get going. Um, now what we're gonna do is that we also have our reset button. 
So um, we can say, uh, okay, here, yeah, here. Here, our reset button is called reset. So we're gonna say reset, oh, reset dot, oops, dot add event listener. And what this does is that we know um, this is so that the program will add um, an event to the reset button. So if you remember our event is like, for example, if you click on it, so our event is click. So we're going to say click. Uh, and this is how we're just adding in the arguments. And then inside of this, we're going to add another function. If you remember from last week, you are allowed to have a function without, within a function. So just make sure that um, the function is within the arguments of add event listener. All right. And now what we're gonna do, um, can anyone say what the purpose of the reset button is? To turn the, the hours, minutes, and seconds back to zero. Right. So, um, the most obvious way to do that, we have the hours, minutes, seconds variables. So we can just set them equal to zero. So, all right, you just h dot value equals zero. And then m dot value is also equal to zero. And then the last one, can anyone guess? S dot value equals to zero. Good. All right. Now we set all of our values to zero, but there is one problem. If we had our function in here to count down, so the way that we're going to do that is that we start at some value and then it just subtracts and subtracts and subtracts. What's the problem if we just press reset? It'll keep subtracting. Um, but it'll so, go to negatives. Yes. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add a stop um, interval. So we're gonna create a function inside the JavaScript and just say stop. Call it stop interval. In parentheses and then our brackets. And then we can just call a clear interval. So this is a function that is already built into the JavaScript library. So we're going to say clear interval. And then what is the interval that we want to clear? The subtracting interval? Yeah, so it's our object, which is like we can change, our right? Timer? Yeah, so we're just going to clear our start timer. And now um, we should be able to call this within the class. And it should be good. And now our last thing, oh, we're probably going to end pretty early. The last thing of our uh, JavaScript is we're going to create the function that will make the timer go down. So again, we're going to declare a function and then maybe name it something like a timer. Um, and then we don't need arguments since our variables are already global. So basically what that means is that we our variables um, values are gotten up here. So um, you, it can be used like anywhere within the program. So you don't need to like pass it in, for example, and for, for the purposes of this class, we're just gonna keep it this way. All right. So um, what we're gonna do is that we're going to have a series of if and else if statements. 
Um, that makes it so that we can just subtract one every second. So you can say if h dot value. Um, so in the case that the user hasn't entered anything, what should happen? Um, it would still equal to zero. Yep. So we're just going to make sure that um, our program won't freak out if the user enters zero. So um, if h dot value equals equals zeros and so and and is just like if both sides of this are true. So, oh, did I ever explain if statements? I don't remember. Did I ever explain and? Uh, I don't think and and, but if statement we talked about. Yeah, okay. So if statements, the code inside the block will happen if the condition or what's in the parentheses is true. So what and and does is that it makes sure that it adds more conditions that the if statement needs to have are true in order for the code inside to run. So for example, we have h dot value equals equals zero and also m dot value equals equals zero. Make sure I have a parentheses here. Um, what this does is that in order for the code inside of the if statement to run, both h dot value equals equals zero and m dot value equals equals zero has to be true. So and and just means both of them have to be true. If one of the values is false, then the code inside the statement won't run. If both the values inside the if both the values are false, then the code will still not run. All right, and then we'll just add one more and and here. Um, can anyone guess what this is? For s dot value equals equal to zero. Yes, good job. Nice. Okay. Um, and then remember to set them all equal to zero. S dot value. All right, and now we can work on our next statement. So um, else if, what this does is, oh, what this does is, if this value, um, so we're just gonna, it's just a bunch of, it's a series of if statements stuck together. So, so, <coughs> okay. So basically, it's just like connecting if statements. So we're just going to treat it as such. So we have if the s value within the user input is not equal to zero, what should it do? It's a decrease. Yes. So we're going to write this out is if s dot value is not equal to zero, it's going to increase, oh, sorry, sorry, decrease. So we are directly editing the values that both shows up and also is inputted. So um, minus minus, you remember, is just decreasing by one. And now, we have the min. Oh, we have the seconds. Now, how are we gonna do the hours and the minutes? The same way. Else, if, uh, m dot value is exclamation mark equals zero. Then m dot value minus minus. And for hours, else if h dot value exclamation mark is equal to zero, then h dot value minus minus. Mm hmm that's good all right so we're just going to write this oh, actually since you know how it works 
How about you? I'll give you uh, five minutes to write um, write the program for M and also H. And then I'll check in with you guys after that. Sounds good? Yes. Okay, have fun. Oh, that was fast. Okay. Um, does anyone else need more time? Okay. The weird thing is when I tested it out with three seconds, I clicked the start button and it it turns the three seconds into zero, and when I do the reset button, it does nothing. Oh, you mean like, your reset button doesn't work? Yeah, I can share my screen as you. Yeah, I'll, I'll make you co-host, sure. Okay, uh, share screen. So I have three seconds right now, and my code for the reset is where is I think it's this one. That's start. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah. And then I click reset and it doesn't happen. Um. Oh, uh, go to your reset variable and read to me what the line says. Oh, uh. It won't start here. Yeah, it's supposed to be reset. So you remember the button calls uh, reset. All right. Okay. Hold on, if I click. Oh, nice. that works. Okay, good. Thank you. No problem, of course. All right. So since you know how to do that, I'll just do this. All right. Um, and then just to check our answer, we're going to do another else if, um, and follow the same format, m.value does not equal to zero. And also, if the s value is not equal to zero, S dot value is going to equal 59. And then we're going to subtract one from the M value. And then another else if we're going to have H dot value this time is not equal to zero and M dot value, M dot value does not wait equal oops i just did wrong here oh oh this should be equals okay so if m dot value does not equal zero and s dot value does equal zero then the s value will just be 59 and then uh, the m value will 
decrease. So this way, all of our um, our thing is like on time. Okay. Else, if can you copy the code, please? Yeah, I will after. Um, it's just uh, this last part. Okay. okay, and then the last part is just we're going to make the same thing with the SL value. So this will just be 60. And then this dot value, and then you just subtract this. I have a um, question. Yeah? So in the first part, it says S dot value is 59. And in the minute, it says F dot value. M dot value is 60. Why does it have to be like one digit and difference? Like, can they both be 59 or can they both be 60? Um, wait, there should be 59. You're right. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. There you go. Okay. Just make sure. Wait, this one. Wait, is that supposed to happen? Didn't we set a limit? Max 60. Oh, okay, there. That's good. Okay. Okay, let's see if this works. It should work. I hope it works. Oh, it's fast. It's fast for some reason. Okay, but this is right, except for the fact that it's really fast. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh. Anyways, okay. Anyways, I'll just copy and paste this entire thing to the chat. That's strange. So we're going to do the timer function every a thousand milliseconds. That should be right. Time handler, time out, one for any number. I don't know why, but mine is. Uh, a little slow. It is? Yeah. Um, share your screen. Okay. One moment. Let me reset. And then. I've waited you two minutes. See? It's not really fast. Yeah, that's right. That's good. I don't know what's wrong with my program. I don't really know. I mean, I didn't really add much of this stuff. Mine should be right. I don't know why it's wrong. <laughs> oh, it's doing that. Maybe you need to like reload it. No. But you know what? Since yours works, it must work for everyone else as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this. This is a good code. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, it might have something to do with the start and the set interval function let me look 
set interval JavaScript. So calls a function every 100 milliseconds. I think it has something to do with my looping. Hmm. Okay, it seems like it is a function evocation problem. Actually, no, this is not the same problem. Okay, you know what? I Okay, this is a problem that will take me like a couple minutes to figure out. Anyways, if I figure it out, um, I'll like make a Google Classroom announcement. Uh, but other than that, that is the end of our intuitive JavaScript class. Um, so keep messing around, add more features if you'd like, add more buttons if you'd like. Um, yeah, but besides that, um, that is the end of our curriculum. I do have a class survey though. Let me just get it. Here you go. So please fill that out. But besides that, thank you so much for sticking to the end of Instagram JavaScript. It was really fun. And um, our next stage set, our next stage session will be in like two weeks. So, um, get ready to sign up for that too. <laughs> All right. But besides that, you guys are free to go. Thank you for coming. Bye. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so I have this website and it's called a dragon website. I can show you. Oh, sounds interesting. Yeah, it's all about dragons right now. The videos don't really work. So. Wow, that's impressive. I haven't put much in my other page though, but I have this button that I tried to link a website with. Um, there I use another like type of coding thing called CodePen.io, and mm -hmm. in there this button works, except. In this one, uh, I don't really know why. It doesn't really work. Oh. It, it's supposed to link to this jellycat.com Dexter Dragon. Um, like the exact code works in the other one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, well, you can continue. Oh. Go to index.html. Uh, 
where's your uh where are you uh linking the javascript file over here on click no, no no like where where do you say um where do you like link the javascript file what do you mean like scripts src uh script source oh sc okay oh no that's right script.js okay um that is strange yeah i don't really know why maybe uh stack blitz is kind of different so on stack blitz how am i supposed to link uh, another web page using a button to this website because um i can add links for some reason like mm -hmm. here yeah. this link works it just yeah. brings me to an origami dragon scene that's cute okay that's impressive okay um can you go back to your javascript okay yeah this is my javascript i think it might be something wrong with my javascript but it doesn't tell like there's no red arrows coming up mm, yeah uh this is a small thing but just put semicolons after your declarations oh uh, like put a semicolon at the end of each of the stuff. Not not the brackets, just the two lines inside of the function. Okay, you mean like this one? Yeah. And this one? I don't know if it works with that. Yeah, um. Do you ever call Jellycat web page? Yeah, it's like, wait, what do you mean call Jelly? Like, invoke it? Because you uh, have to, okay. So, the only reason why our button, our timer buttons work is that we added an event listener. So, when you click the button, the JavaScript knows to run that function. Oh, I haven't done that. Mm, yeah, okay. Um, I'll help you. Okay. So if you remember our uh, button to like start our timer, yeah. we have a start dot add event listener, and then the first thing is like click, so you know it start it knows to start it when you click the button, and then the second argument is the function. So you already have the function, but you also have a CSS inside of it. Um, take the CSS out, like the style thing. Take it out, or just put it at the top. Here? Yeah, just take it out of the function. And just paste it somewhere else if you want to make the button a different color. Okay, or no, not in the CSS, but in the JavaScript. Uh, Sorry, I misspoke. It's not CSS, it's styling it using JavaScript. Okay, yeah, yeah, you can just paste it there. All right, so now you're, now the color changed. Before it was not changed, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so you already have the ID for your button, right? Yeah. So um, just one. huh? It's called button one. That's the ID. Okay, let's create a var called button. Oh, um, where do I put that? Um, just just in in your JavaScript file, just a uh below the styling javascript yeah so bar bar very var variable like we're creating a variable var bar um button var button do, do you get what uh we're trying to do so oh. basically when you add an event listener you have to add it to a uh, subject so we're creating yeah. this variable subject so that we can invoke the event listener. Okay. Okay. So now uh, set it equal to the button. The button, one. button name, like what had it? No, no, no. Like getting the button one. Do you know how to get the element? It's no. right. 
document dot get element by id and then oh, oh. that's what it's for so get element id will just select the attribute inside of the index code um like that's a uh, actually that you want to edit yeah nice okay yeah semicolon yeah okay and now we're going to invoke the event listener. Okay, so it's called start wait button. Uh, mm -hmm. Button is right. Add, add, yeah. Add event listener. Add event listener? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. This is perfect. Uh -huh. All right. So, what's the first argument of the event listener? What kind of event you're looking for, right? Yep. Nice. Who's we're going to put that in? Good. And then the comma. Yep. All right. Uh, it says document is not defined. Okay, because uh, it has to be a. Uh, um, so remove the Jelly Cat web page. So first we had to declare that we're gonna um put in a function. So just remove that. So function and then the arguments says oh. Inside of this, I'm going to put in my function. Right. You mean yeah. I put it inside this thing? No, 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 wait. No. That That's the argument of the function that you're going to make. Okay. So, um, yeah, so then just do uh, under, under the, under the, that, on, on live on line create a new line for sorry create a new line for that's fine create a new line for the above the var troll equals window that open oh above okay yeah okay and now we're gonna declare our like uh function for like the cat interval the, for the thing what whatever it was called before i for, i forgot what it's called Jellycat webpage. Huh? It was called Jellycat webpage. Okay, okay. So now tab, and then we're going to say function Jellycat webpage. A function inside a function? Well, the function is just saying, oh, inside of this, I'm going to put a function. Okay. All right. And then your arguments and the way that you would regularly set up function, and then you can put in your code. Meaning this, this thing? Yeah. Okay. Oh no, what happened? Just press Command Z. Uh, press Control Z. Control Z. Uh, I don't have a control. Or Windows Z. Wait, what? Yeah. There we go. It's back. Now I can move it. Command C. Perfect. Why I just delete this one? Yeah, delete that one. Okay. Why is it still? Oh, oh, uh, go, go back. You mean this uh, one? I mean, uh, press, oh, actually put an indent, um, on line five. Okay, that's better. Okay, now go, um, to, like, the web page itself and just reload it. On the side, on the side, the right side. The other right side. 
Yeah, just reload the web page. Click the link. Just click the link. Oh. Uh, I don't really know. Okay, just close that. <laughs> um, and then click open. Open here. I can just time. annotate oh, it. I'll yeah. annotate it. This one. Uh, this thing. Okay. Sorry, I haven't really used it before. So. It's okay. It's okay. Script error. In script two fourteen. Wait, there's something. I right, go back to script. Line fourteen. I don't line have two. a line fourteen. Bar button equals document dot get element by ID. Button one. Hmm. I just give you the link. Something is wrong, and I don't know what's wrong with it. Is it the website that is wrong? Huh? Is it the website that is wrong? No, it shouldn't. You can check the link if you want, but I don't think it should cause an error message. It's just a, it's just a link. One moment, okay. Copy and paste. This thing's called Jelly Cat, and I have this Dexter Dragon, so I want to fit that. Oh, it's so cute. That's nice. Okay, maybe. Uh, can you send me your stack blitz link, and I'll just look at it from my computer. Sure. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Jellycat web page is declared, but its value is never read. Document is not defined. Oh, you spelled document wrong. It's supposed to be document. Document. You uh in line two. You need to add a U. Oh. There we go. All right. That's uh, the link still doesn't work though. Oh. Uh. Oh, okay. Yeah, just uh, remove like the function part, the second function. I made an oopsie. Thing uh, don't you don't need to remove the middle code. Just just cross out this and this. Okay, I'll get rid of this. Yep. And yeah, this. Yep, and now it should work. There we go. Okay, my bad. Yay! Thank you. No problem. Yeah.